All right, welcome back to Machine Organization and Programming. This is our fourth lecture for week eight. Uh, and here we're going to be wrapping up the rest of C, at least I think it is, with file input and output. All right, this is uh, the last topic. It's something we need for the next homework assignment, so I want to make sure that I get this out before the homework assignment comes up. All right, uh, this is also from the uh, C programming uh, textbook. Uh, the C version of file input and output is in section 7.5 to 7.7. .7. And we can also use Linux system calls to do file input and output. And that's in section 8.1 to 8.3. Need to be a little careful there, so pay attention to the warnings. Um, and so I, most of what I'm doing here is footage that I recorded over the summer that I, I thought was pretty good. I didn't go back and redo it. If I were to go back and redo it, the one thing I would do is uh, include more information from the manual pages, man pages for all of the different functions that I introduce. So my advice is to just pause the video as you go through, and every time I talk about any one of these lines of code, pull up the man page and follow along with that. And those functions in particular are fopen, fread, fwrite, fgets, and then for the Linux system calls open and write. Uh, definitely pause the video, pull those up, um, and we'll be getting some practice with this uh, file input and output with the next um, programming assignment. All right, uh, so let me go ahead and jump into file input and output. All right, guys, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, reading and writing to files. So uh, looking at what we've got right here, this is uh, my file1.c. I've got three examples for us today. This is just an example of opening a file and reading from it. So if we go through here, um, I'm defining max. This is a great way to just uh, create a constant that I'll be using for the size of everything because C does not dynamically allocate things. For example, right here, I'm creating a character array to hold all of the data that's being read from the file um, in uh, buff. And let's see here. I'm also creating a file pointer variable. So check this out. The star here tells me it's a pointer. This is a file pointer. So this is just going to be a stream of characters that we can read in from. Uh, to use that, I'm going to yep, uh, assign that file pointer from the function fopen. And the file I'm reading, so here are the options. The file I'm reading is going to be this gatesquote.txt file. That should be available in the code download section of on Canvas. And we're going to be opening this in read mode. Uh, one sec, I'll pull up the uh, man page for fopen. We can see all of the different options. Okay, and then um, what we'll do with it is we're going to just go through. We're going to use fgets. This is going to just read a string of, of bytes from the... Uh, whatever uh, the file pointer is pointing to and it's going to read at most this number of bytes so this is why i'm putting this in here if i didn't have this maximum uh, value to uh, decide how big my character array is i could easily overrun this buffer and fill it with more characters than will actually fit in memory so this is why i'm using this numerical constant for um, the size of things uh, way better than hard coding because I only have to change it in one spot if I'm suddenly going to be reading a bigger file. Um, I'm doing this in a while loop right here. fgets is going to read until it runs into an end line or an end of file marker. And uh, it returns that uh, either um, the character it reads or if it reaches the end of the file, it returns the ELF, which is going to evaluate it to false in a while loop. Um, again, I'll pull up that man page in just a second and highlight these. Then all I'm going to do is print out that buffer as a string. And then at the very end, I need to close my file pointer um, with F close. This is important because you can only have so many files open at a time. Um, when this program uh, ends, uh, the operating system will take care of closing all those files for me if I forget. Uh, in my third example, I'm going to talk about something that doesn't do that. It's just very good practice to make sure that even if we only have one file open, that we remember to close it when we're done. Um, and this is a uh, is talking to the operating system because there's a communication there between the disk and your uh, program in C. All right, let me uh, go run this. We'll show you that it works. You can read the awesome quote, and uh, then I'll pull up those man pages. All right, guys. So I just compiled it successfully, and uh, I'm going to run it in three, two, two and a half, one. Okay. Um, so there you go. The computer was born to solve problems that did not exist before by Bill Gates, one of my favorites. 
um, and we can see that it's working. If I go to that file, uh, let's see what I call it, gates, yep, I can just see there's the only thing in this file is that quote. You guys can download that yourself. Let's get out of here. And now I was going to pull up the man page for F open and take a look at that. I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Let's see here. Yep. So it requires a path name. In this case, uh, I can either give it a character pointer, so a pointer to basically a string in C, or I could, what I did was I just uh, hard coded the uh, file name as a uh, inside quotes, as a string literal. And then um, it also requires that a character for the mode. Um, and this is again going to be a character buffer. So if I'm putting this in a, a character pointer, so if I, I can have more than one character here. Um, let's see here. I wanted to highlight, let me scroll down a little bit, all the different modes that are available to us. So I was using R. So this is just all going to open the file for reading. If the file doesn't exist, it's going to return null. So I'm going to go back in a second and add a check for that because I didn't do that. Not That, that first program doesn't have great programming um, style practice. Um, R plus will open it for both reading and writing. Um, it's the same thing more or less as uh, W plus. Um, I believe this one will fail if the file is not open, it'll return null. And this one will create a new file if it does not exist. So that's the difference between the W and the R plus version. Um, and if we just open a file with W, even if there's a file there, it's going to delete the contents of the file and prepare it for writing. So we're going to nuke whatever's in the file. Um, a is sort of the uh, uh, append version of that. It's going to keep whatever's at the file and put the position where it's going to write at the end of the file. And uh, A plus is just going to create the file if it doesn't exist. If um, I'm reading, or if I, it allows me to read from it and append to the end. So if I just go ahead and start uh, writing uh, text to this, it'll just put it at the end. Okay, um, we can also add the character B if I'm writing to write the text in binary. So WB would write in binary. There we go, right there. And where's the return stuff? Yep, the return value upon successful completion returns a file pointer, which is a non-null uh, pointer to like location in memory. It's treated just like reading from memory. Otherwise, a uh, null is returned. Um, error number is set, so you can read that from the, the uh, command line later. Okay, yep, so that's what I want to do here. And then I also wanted to open the man page for f gets. All right, there's a bunch of different versions of getting data. This is just another way to read from an input stream, like the keyboard or from a file. So um, the version I'm using right now is this f gets. I gave it a character buffer to fill in. I told it how many bytes I want to read, and then I gave it a source, and this was my, my file pointer. Um, so basically, f gets. Uh, with a C is going to get a character. F gets without that is just going to read um, however many characters I tell it to. And the return value, this is the part I wanted to focus on, is the character that's read uh, cast to an integer or EOF. And EOF is going to return evaluate to false if I use that as a condition. All right, let me move on to the next example. I lied, I wasn't quite ready to move on to the next example. I wanted to show that. I, I did not do great programming practice here. I'm using fopen without ever testing to see if this file really existed. So here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to just uh, add a conditional. If fp is equal to null, that means this has failed. So instead what I want to do is just uh, whoops, return 1. And the 1 there would be a signal that this is an error. It did not return normally. I um, could also use uh, exit uh, 1. And that's a system call that's going to just crash the program immediately. If I, I would prefer that one if I were using this inside of a function because that will end no matter where I am. Return inside a function will just um, parentheses where I don't need them. Uh, we'll just go exit the function. Okay. Um, let me make sure this still works. I didn't mess up. There it is. So no problem. Next example. All right, guys. So in this example, I'm going to be writing to a file and then reading it back just to make sure that it really worked. And again, um, 
all of this input output stuff is just in standard IO. So, <clears throat> and again, to use this, I'm going to open a file. So I'm creating a file pointer. So this is going to be a location in memory where I'm going to be interacting with my file through the operating system. Um, F open returns that location as a pointer. And I'm using WB as my option here. So I'm going to be writing this as a binary file as opposed to an ASCII file. You guys can experiment by taking that B off and just see the difference. All right, and I'm calling the file bar.bin. So foo and bar are typically used when we don't know what to do for a file name. So uh, I'm going with bar this time. And bin is sort of the abbreviation for a binary file. If I were writing this as an ASCII text file, I would have gone with txt. And here's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna write down this number, hexadecimal, one through eight. Uh, all right, now, because I'm opening in write mode, I'm gonna use fwrite as the C command to uh, write to a function. That takes uh, four options in this case. I need to tell it what I'm writing. And this is gonna be more or less a pointer or assigned to a pointer inside, so I need the address of something if it's just a variable. If it's already a pointer, I can just leave this as um, without the address of. And this is gonna write a number of bytes, but it's gonna do it in, um, uh, takes two options to get there. So it's gonna ask for the size of whatever we're writing. So if it's an integer, if it's an object, if it's a character, I'm just gonna give it however many bytes are in my integer or character or short or whatever, system dependent, may change in the future. And then how many of those things I'm writing. So it's assuming that I'm giving it a, an array. And if I have a string, I wanna make sure this is big enough to include the entire string. And then where to write. And again, this is uh, this file pointer is how I'm interacting with the operating system to make sure this gets put on the disk. And as always, close your files. We only get to a certain number of them open. Uh, and again, this version where I'm using F open uh, is gonna return the file as soon as the program, is gonna close the file for me when I get to the end of my program at this return line. The operating system will take care of that for me, but it's good practice. Okay, now in part two of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and open my file again, I'm gonna reuse that same file pointer. So this will just be assigned a new memory location where I'm interacting with the operating system to open that file. And I'm gonna be opening it in read, and again, binary mode, because this is a binary file. Um, declare a variable so I can read the number into it. I don't wanna use this same one because that already has the number and I wanna show you guys for real that I'm doing this correctly. So I'll be reading that number, and again, fread takes a location in memory where I'm gonna be storing something. This is not a pointer, it's just a, a regular variable, so I need the address of that. And again, fread requires um, what I'm uh, the size of whatever I'm writing, how many bytes. There's another option here for if I'm giving the size of number of bytes and how many integers I'm reading, or how many things I'm reading, um, and then the pointer where this goes to. So this is the four option version of that. All right, and then, um, <clears throat> Yep, I'm just gonna print this out to the screen as a hex number so I can see that it worked. And again, I'm closing my file pointer. All right, let me go ahead and run this. And uh, I'll cut the video so that you can just see the routes and don't need to watch me type. All right, guys, so I compiled it. There were no errors. I'm running it. And what I can see is that the number that I read in is indeed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So looks like it's working. All right, and just one more thing before I move on. If I list the contents of my directory, I can see I've got bar.bin right here. And if you remember from like lecture three or something, we have this hex dump command. I may have used octal dump back then. But anyway, um, hex dump dash x. Uh, there we go, dash x, and then bar.bin. I can read the contents of this file. So this first number here is the position number. This is the memory location, essentially, where the file begins um, in bytes. And then it's a, uh, I've got the number here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But we can see is that they chose to write the bytes in what I would consider an interesting order. So at position zero, we've got 56. And then at byte one, we've got 78. And then at position three, we've got 12 and then 34 wrapping it up. Uh, and then nothing, this would be the uh, end of the file here at byte four. So uh, there we go, that's what it looks like. All right, guys, I just want to show you one more way of writing to files. Um, I'm using open here instead of f open, and I'm using write instead of f write and close instead of f close. These three are actually Linux system calls, and C will let us do that. Um, so this is not regular C programming. It's uh, calling a Linux program. So I don't believe this works on Windows 
or on a Mac. It might, and it may behave differently. Um, <clears throat> one of the major differences is that if I'm using a system call to open a file, it's not automatically closed when this C program ends because it's not a C function. And uh, the operating system will leave it open for us. So this one's a little more dangerous in my opinion. I have to remember to close your file. Um, <clears throat> so the way this open works, it just requires the name of the text file or the name of the file we'll be writing to. And then it has all of these different options. We're using the or here. So this is actually creating a bit field. Um, so all of these would correspond to one um, bit in an integer that gets passed in. So um, O stands for option. I'm going to be creating a new file. I'm going to be writing only, so I won't be reading. And I'm going to be writing at the end of whatever's already there. This create doesn't like nuke whatever's there. If it, it just creates it if it doesn't exist. Um, I don't remember what this one does. Uh, it's, I copied this code from someone else. Uh, all right, and then this uh, FD, the value that it returns, is sort of the operating system control number for that file. You can print it out and see what it is. It's uh, assigned a negative integer if the, this open fails. So that's what we're going to test for to see if there's an error. Um, and you guys can go open the man page and read exactly the return type of this just to uh, refresh your memory if you're ever using it. But here's the idea. Um, oh, I also wanted to highlight that I'm using fprintf a little differently. So we've been using printf up through now. That's printing a format string. F here in the front says we're going to be printing to a file, just like f open, f close, f write, f print is printing to a file. And it takes as an argument whatever file I want to print to. Um, by default, the printf without the f is going to go to standard out, stdout. That um, is the screen. Standard air by default also goes to the screen. Um, this f just means I get to tell it where I want to write. And I can use um, the name of a file right here or a pointer to a file, I'm sorry, pointer to a file to um, decide where this goes. So in this case, I'm just going to be writing to the screen. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'll redirect this standard error to like a log file or something or an error file so that if your program crashes, for example, in the future when you guys are working on real production code at your job, you'll probably have something like this that uh, should your customers find out that the program crashes, you want them to send you an error log so you can fix the bug rather than just trying to guess what they were doing. Um, this is how you'll do that. All right, and then we're, um, let's see, down here we're using write instead of fwrite. And again, this is a Linux system call. It takes that which file I'm writing to, and they're given uh, like an ID number. And then the next argument is what I'm printing, in this case, hello world. And this is how many bytes I'm going to be printing. And this needs to be at least equal to however many bytes right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I've got one extra for the uh, end of file. And then um, close this. Definitely close it. All right, let's go make sure this works. All right, so let me see here. I'll go ahead and do the... Grab that. This is file 3 and 3. All right, then we'll just run this, file 3. Now I should see that I have created testfile.txt. Um, and it wrote it out as a binary file. So this program actually believes that this is uh, executable. Uh, let's take a look at it and just verify that. Um, it is uh, written in ASCII code. So we can actually see Vim will translate anything that's in ASCII to this um, <coughs> characters we can read and then this stuff at the end is garbage because I printed one extra character um, that cannot be printed as an ASCII character 